take your focus away from women mm -hmm. and put it onto yourself, and then the women tend to come. Oh, just work on yourself. Forget about girls. Forget about dating. No, that's not how it works. No, no, no. What's up, guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to Michael Sartain what men should do instead of pursuing women. Okay, I haven't seen this yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be more bullshit. Oh, just work on yourself and all uh, the women will come. Hamza, the creator Hamza, the idiot, is notorious for saying this kind of shit. He's like, stop going to clubs, delete your Tinder. Great, now you've cut off all your options for getting girls. Work on yourself, man, and the girls will just come. That's not how it works. Okay, let's jump in. Now what happens when you do this and you realize you're gonna- This little fucking dork. <laughs> <laughs> the Santa hat. Die and you work out and you go make money and you practice in jujitsu and you go kayaking. What ends up happening to you as a man? You you take a focus, take your focus away from women mm -hmm. and put it onto yourself and then the women tend to come. No, that's not how it works. Don't fucking buy into this nonsense, guys. You don't just focus on yourself and the women come. That doesn't work. You have to walk up to them in public at a bar or club or during the daytime, you have to approach or you have to actively go and seek them out on the online dating apps. That's how you actually get girls, okay? Not just working on yourself and then they magically come in magnetically. I get clients every single week that made a lot of money, that built up a good body, that had a lot of shit going in their life, okay? All kinds of cool hobbies and all this stuff. Sexless for a long period of time because this is a strategy game. You need to know how to go and meet the girls, how to move them through the process to get dates, how to hook up with them and so on and so forth, how to keep the ones around that you want. That's what you need to learn how to do. Look up on the shelf here, David Buss, okay? That's who he, Sartain fucking copies. He just repeats all his fucking talking points, okay? And Robert Kiyosaki, the scammer here down below. Sartain's a little fucking punk ass bitch who's still running away scared after challenging me to a fight two weeks ago. Radio silent, making excuses, wants to debate instead because he's a huge puss. Basically, at the end of um, the book of numbers, it's basically like, dude, take yourself out of this dating market, right? And you've seen certain, uh, Chris Williamson put out a tweet the other day, why 50% of men are taking themselves out of the dating market. 50% of men are taking themselves out of the dating market. Okay, Michael. My question is, what should they be doing? I mean, there's this, the, the drive for sexual intercourse and sexual validation is still going to be there, mm -hmm. right? What should they be doing instead? Well, there's a couple <clears throat> things, and it depends on, on you. But I, the next book I came out was called The Menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. Yeah. Because for some, the cost... For some men, it's not everyone. There's there's no universe. Like fucking MGTOW bullshit. Men going their own way. Oh, just work on yourself. Forget about girls. Forget about dating. For some men, the pursuit of women is just going to be cost prohibitive. Like, I got to do what? You know, like, I'm 5'6". I'm short. And yeah, I got to ask. You can get girls if you're 5'6". It's, it, but it's so much more added effort and work that for an individual, you may look at them and say, you know what? I got to hit the gym and I got to make six figures. Da, 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 da. No, that's bullshit. Girls don't give a fuck about money. Stop listening to this nonsense that gets pushed around on these red pill channels. Like some of the best I've seen clients do is when they were flat broke. Some of the best runs I've had in the game was when I was broke many years back. Girls don't know how much money is in your bank account, nor do they give a shit, unless you're a gold digger. Unless you're living in poverty, okay, living in squalor, which almost no one is, it's not applicable to most of you watching, okay? You're either watching this on your phone or on your computer, and you have your basic needs met. The rest is gonna be how you carry yourself, your behavior. Women respond to confidence and survival and replication value. You don't need to go wear nice clothes and flash nice things around. And, and show them that you're making a good salary, okay? It's not fucking relevant despite all the shit you hear from these guys. Oh, you need to go hit the gym and uh, make six figures. No, no, no. I can teach you exactly how to meet girls in cold approach during the daytime and the nighttime, how to meet them on the online dating apps, how to text to get them on dates, how to run those dates flawlessly so that you get most of them back home, how to get the hookup and how to keep the ones that you want. Book a free dating strategy call with the link in the description or pinned comment below to get all your dating problems handled very quickly. You know, there's a substitute good called prawn yeah. that I can do. And I think that's a huge variable in it where, and I remember if I did the math. So, so you talking about porn? You'd have to ask out about eight or nine girls to get a date. And then you'd have to go on the date with the girl. And then one in three might sleep with you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Again, this is just stats thrown out there by a guy that has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. 75 to 80% of your dates will close on the first date. 
Okay, if you run the date properly, he's saying one in three will sleep with you. No, that's completely wrong. Well, you start multiplying this up. Okay, that's fine when you're a twenty year old man. Sure. And you got all the end and you it have was, no it no, was fun. It, it was, was going out, it, even getting rejected was fun. You were out with your buddies. It was fun. I agree with you. Well, I, I was young. I, I didn't give a fuck. With it, your buddies it's fun, but then you're on the actual date with the girl yeah. and you ain't with your buddies. And it's like listening to this boring like, I'm gonna go become a school teacher. Like <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> This guy's claiming to be an expert with women with that dumbass hat and his little fucking gay behavior. So horny you want to get... Well, that's fine if you're 20 years old making $11 an hour. Yeah. All of a sudden you're 45 and you're making $120 an hour and you're sick of that shit. Like, a, a, a person would look at that and say, oh, by the way, <clears throat> in the cacophony of women online telling you how much they hate you and they don't like you and you better... Da, 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 da. And... You have some corroborating evidence going online and getting shot down all the time for a significant percentage of men. They're going to do the, the calculus. They're going to do the economics. They say, this is not worth it. And I'm checking out. The reason why guys are getting shot down, the reason why guys are getting rejected, the reason why their efforts are not panning out in most cases is because their strategy and tactics are off. Okay, let me repeat that. Your strategy and tactics in this dating game, which is a skill game, are way off. You're making the wrong moves. You're doing the wrong things. Doing more and more of the wrong things is not eventually going to lead to success. It's going to continue to lead to failure. That's how companies like Real Social Dynamics convinced you to buy over 70 different products from them. Oh yeah, this is the solution now. This is the solution now. Just take more action. Just take more action. Playing a skill game with bad strategy is gonna keep leading to failure and guys eventually get frustrated to the point where they wanna give up. They're continuously deflating their confidence and they're reinforcing negative bullshit narratives about how they're not good enough and how this is not for them. So the solution is to learn proper strategy. Get on one of those calls in the description and I will show you the optimal strategy. In which case, then there's the menu life without the up. Is it sex you can pursue things like philosophy, religion? You can pursue philosophy and religion even if you're having sex and going on dates, okay? It's not one of the other. Oh, no, I'm done with this trying to find girls thing. Now I can go study philosophy. The two coexist. Hey, all these idiots that say, go work on yourself or get rid of women and you have all this other time. No, you can do both. Pursue sloth because let's just admit it, they're lazy at the core and they don't yes. want to put, and, and they're also cowards, I'm afraid, because they're afraid of rejection. Yes. So there's, there's that too. Um, <clears throat> another thing you can do is, uh, which I'm not against, is uh, overseas. It's no different. So I was getting, we were going to get into passport bros. Right. Way, pass, shout out to the passport bros who made a video being very mean to me the other day. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what the video was, but it's not irrational. For example, we do this in economics all the time. The labor unions are getting a little uppity yeah. at, at the auto industry. Well, we're going to set up a plant down in Mexico. Yes. The labor unions get a little uppity in Detroit. We're going to go down to That's the That's what Carolinas. passport bros are. It's like, it's like, it's a uh, mm -hmm. arbitrage for, uh, mm -hmm. Economic arbitrage, but for dating. Right, and then we do it. We did it with China. Like, wow, it. We don't make our cell phones here. We make it in China. All right, and so I can I can appreciate. You, look, you get a better deal overseas. Now there are risks involved, as there always is, and and there are drawbacks to passport pros. But right now, I'd look at it. Uh, yeah, I was like, I'm looking at the girl. I'm like, as a young. You know, we're in our 40s. By the way, for those that think that I might be a passport bro because I moved to Brazil. Okay, when I'm from New York, I'm from America. That's just because most of the girls in the US are fat. I don't think that makes me a passport bro. Okay, I don't want to live in a place where the majority of women are fat. Okay, I don't want to sleep with fat girls. I don't get involved with fat girls. I'll leave that to the red pill dating coaches. Okay, they all have their own little fat girlfriend or wife that, that they're proud of. Okay, usually middle aged as well and, and looking disgusting. I like to live where there's a lot of hot girls. Okay, and the girls are way cooler here as well. I as of a 23 year old kid today, a young man. I'm looking at this <laughs> and now we have the internet that exposes it all. When we were teens, 20s, we didn't have the red pill. There was no internet to say, oh yeah, it's just hype. Thank God, because the red pill is all fucking dog shit and poison. Pergamy, like well, you had no clue. We had a box that was out in the woods. Watch my video in the end screen, okay, where I show Michael Sartain lying about his height. He tries to claim publicly that he's six foot one. Okay, in this picture, he's very clearly something around five foot nine is what it looks like. But he goes around and lies about his height and he lies with his snake oil bullshit social circle method. Okay, saying that that's the solution to get girls. It's not, you have to either cold approach them in public 
during the daytime or at night at a bar or club, or you have to meet them on the online apps. Going and photobombing pictures with a bunch of girls organizing fake charity events is not only creepy and manipulative, okay, but it's not going to work. It's going to get you a bunch of pictures where girls are friend zoning you. Okay, so this guy is a huge fucking poison and snake in the community currently, and he's also a mega pussy, as I've demonstrated in multiple videos, okay, how he challenged me to a fight and then ran away scared once I accepted. Somebody buried, and then it had like Victoria's Secret and right, Frederick's sure, Hollywood. Yeah. That's all we had. That's all you That's had. That's all we had. That's and, all you had. And then gutter talk at the fucking locker room. Right. That was the red pill. But like now, that. well, and you'll appreciate this being a military pilot. Yeah. It's like, it's not like we put an AWAC up in the air to get a feel. And for the military shit. Okay, he was a fucking pilot for a refueling period. <laughs> it wasn't important, wasn't notable, but he likes to constantly flex about that. Satellites up there. Like, sure. we, like, oh my gosh, we got, we're no longer soldiers in the trenches of World War I saying, what the hell is going on? Yeah. We're, we got you know, computer printout, like, okay, here's, here's the battle plan. <clears throat> and I can see where a guy is, I don't have time for this. The girls are telling me to make a quarter million a year. That's what, I got the top 1% of men. No, you don't have to do that. Please trust me on this, guys. Okay, I'm currently at lay count 1,766. I've been optimizing the best system in the world for over 20 years. I know how to optimize every single piece and clear away all your weaknesses and bottlenecks and get you executing so that you're regularly getting tons of new dates. Okay, that's what happens to the guys that I train on my eight-week program. They come on by week two or three, their schedule's packed full of dates, okay? If you want that in your life, get on a free strategy call with the link in the description. I can't do this, mm. but I still wanna get married and have kids so I could see the logical conclusion would be to go overseas. Then there's the solution, which is what I recommend, which doesn't negate either of the previous two, it's all individual. Uh, and it's the same thing that Rich Cooper concluded in his book, Unplugged Alpha. Mm -hmm. But plugged beta. Dork, fucking loser, Richard Cooper. All my analysis and that. <clears throat> and that is you're going to die. And I don't know about you, but I'm not religious. I think this is it. There's blackness after this. There's not even me being conscious to recognize the blackness because my sentience will end. I will not be a being to recognize this anymore. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay, that's the logically most likely scenario, okay, given our modern understanding of neuroscience. Life before birth was non-conscious, you were non-existent, you weren't wishing that you were born in 1800. When you die, there's no more brain, which is what gives you your existence and your consciousness, and there's no you anymore reflecting back on, oh, I wish I was still alive. Okay, that's my view. I don't believe in a soul. I think what we refer to as a soul is our current synaptic configuration in our brain, okay, and that's argued for extensively in the book Synaptic Self by Joseph Ledoux. That scares the piss out of me. Really? It, yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it, and it shouldn't scare you, right? There's an ancient philosopher, Epicurus. He says, when death is, I am not. And when I am, death is not. Okay. So by that logic, okay, you shouldn't be scared. It's an irrational fear. <laughs> it's going to happen. I happen to be religion, but okay. religious, but if I was an atheist, I would just, I could see the beauty and just like not having to worry about things anymore. Right. Yeah. There's that too, yeah. but no pain <clears throat> anymore. Like that, there is some beauty in that. Right. But then also it's a blessing because if this is it, if this is all, we're not going up to a God in the sky and looking down and watching the human race, like a, like a football game, we're cheering people on. <laughs> I want to make this count sure. so much which is why I'm always out hiking, which is why I prefer leisure over working. You know, like if you said, hey, do you want to make a hundred bucks or do you want to go hiking? I want to go hiking, you know, as long as I got my other stuff covered. <laughs> That's why I go motorcycle riding. <clears throat> that is the motivation I recommend. Picture this guy in a motorcycle with his Santa hat being like, F you, <laughs> motorcycling to his hiking spot. Men, for men to do because <laughs> it is serving your best interests. You're capitalizing on the life that you've been given. And so you should not be doing drugs. I mean, if you want to do drugs and you're okay with it and it doesn't ruin your life, fine, okay, go ahead. But you should be doing what you want and making the best of your life. And that means getting in physical shape, mm. not for the girls, but for extending your life, for being healthy, for not feeling like crap every morning. Uh, you should go out and make a lot of money. You should study and work and major in the hard things. Why should you study in the hard things? Because then it's going to make the rest of your life easier. Yo, making a lot of money, not all, like the money itself isn't the benefit. That's not the goal. Yeah, it's not the goal no. of the benefit. I will tell you, like putting a team together to solve a problem, 
is I believe the apex of the male mm. human experience. Mm. And that's what happened. And in, in addition, you're gonna make a lot of money. You're mm. gonna play quarterback for a football team or be the CEO of a company or put rockets into space. You're gonna make a lot of money. Mm. But the, I personally believe the apex of the human experience is to have a family and to accomplish goals with other men and women. So you're gonna have a, a family with Michael Jackson? <laughs> Did you hear that one, Michael? Is he going to have a family with that plastic retard? <laughs> but to accomplish goals together, because that's what makes... They can make mini Michaels. <laughs> Michael Jackson Sartain. We're the only animals that, does, that mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the single most thing I was proud of this year... Or no, I'm sorry, it was last year. Last year, the single most proud thing I was about my accomplishments, I put in retaining walls. There you go. Because I built it, right. Yeah. yeah, I didn't make any money. I saved a lot of money doing it myself, but I didn't make any money. <clears throat> and the hap... I wouldn't say the happiest, the most satisfied with my career I had ever been was working campus security with, because of the team of guys I worked with. I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't realize how good these people were, but all of a sudden then you go work into the real world, like, oh my God. Imagine getting stopped by this guy. Hey, campus security here, violation 101. It was a bunch of guys who were patrolling to make the campus safe. It was very simple. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> God, I, f I forgot what the, our larger point was. Um, <laughs> The per oh, that you're going to die. Yeah. Once you got enough money, uh, you don't really need to, to work all that much more. And the reason you should be making a lot of money, like engineering, accounting, whatever, is so that you don't have to worry about money anymore. And then you're free to go and live your life and do what you want. Sure. And then there should be some hobbies. Again, in my book called The Menu. It's like goes through every, like, dude, travel, motorcycle ride, jujitsu, anything. Now, what happens when you do this and you realize you're going to die and you work out and you go make money and you practice in jujitsu and you go kayaking? What ends up happening to you as a man? You, you take a focus, take your focus away from women mm -hmm. and put it onto yourself and then the women tend to come. No. False, false, false. Could not be further from the truth. I have endless, endless, endless counterexamples to that. Okay, I promise you, even though they're saying it authoritatively, okay, and this guy's dressed up in a Christmas hat and has written books. <laughs> that is not how it works. Go try to do that. I have endless examples of guys doing that and coming to me because they have zero girls in their life. There is nothing, and I repeat, nothing that will magnetically draw them to you because you're doing a bunch of cool activities or because you made a bunch of money. It just will not happen. You need to be proactive. You need to meet them on the dating apps. You need to meet them during cold approach. And then you need to know how to text to move those leads down into dates. You need to know how to run your dates so that you bring them home to the house and get the hookup. And you need to know how to retain and keep them. Okay, I can teach you all that. I'm running the best program in the industry. Get on a free call with the link in the description and let me help you. You are a much higher quality man yes. than you were. And so outside of women, my argument is you're finite, this will end. And I look at all these video game addicts who are on pot. They got, I got a social anxiety disorder. I, I got to talk to my therapist again. I, uh, I try to get my associate's degree, but I live at home. I'm like, why are you alive? Honestly, like what? Yeah, you got to be cool and go hiking and work campus security. Then you've made it. Uh, some fat activist died a couple days ago. And her whole thing was like, I'm fat, I'm big, I'm beautiful. Well, you're dead now. Like, this is your life? This is what you're gonna do? You gotta be doing jujitsu, man. And you gotta be doing hiking. Get off your ass and go live it before it's over. It, not even talk, haven't even introduced women into it. And if you do that, at minimum, you're not gonna waste your life. You're gonna have an enjoyable life or at least a content life. And if you do that, you that's the number one thing you can do to drastically improve your chances with women. No, it's not. Oh, it's so fucking frustrating hearing shit like this from non-expert retards. I promise you. I have had client after client after client after client. I've been teaching this for over 10 years now. I've had so many guys come to me that made a lot of money, that got in really good shape, that have all kinds of cool hobbies, that have traveled around. No girls. No girls. None, doing all those things does not bring girls into your life. It does not all of a sudden teach you how to text. It does not teach you how to keep a conversation going, not run out of things to say. It does not teach you how to carry yourself with confidence and conviction. You need to learn all the strategy and tactical elements. Okay, simply going and working on yourself. I've made lots of videos about this. It's not going to help. 
you need to learn the strategy and tactics. I can teach you those things. Get on a free call and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Watch the video on the end screen where I dis sartain more. Don't buy into this nonsense about how, oh, if you just get all these things in your life handled, the girls will flock to you. It doesn't work that way. I promise you it does not work that way. If it did, I'd be like, yeah, here you go. He's saying that's the number one thing you can do. The number one thing you can do to increase your chances with women is to learn how to text, is to learn how to run dates, learn how to close dates, learn how to keep the girls, learn how to cold approach, learn how to build your online profile, learn how to do the fucking dating game properly. I promise you, that is the fastest track to getting good. If you don't believe me, go check out our proof page. There's over 1,250 testimonials all down a page. You can go and look. Those people are getting very good very fast, and they're doing so with strategy and tactics. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Watch video in the I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.